The anime begins with our female lead, Kyuko Hori, a popular and intelligent student at Katajira High. During a class, she faces a barrage of discouraging remarks from her teacher. Later, despite her reputation in the school, she declines a request for her email address from Yuki Yoshikawa. She even goes on to reject an invitation to karaoke with friends. When she stumbles in the school, her book is picked up by a gloomy student, Izumi Miyamura. This action prompts dismissive comments from Toru Ishikawa. Hori rushes home to care for her brother and handle household chores. The next day, she encounters Sato with a nosebleed, accompanied by the enigmatic Miyamura. Intrigued, Hori invites him for coffee, only to be stunned when he reveals himself as her classmate. Hori, initially feeling awkward around Miyamura, surprises him by inviting him over and encouraging their friendship. They grow closer, and Hori learns surprising details about Miyamura, like his middle school piercing incident. Their bond deepens, even leading to Miyamura buying discounted eggs for Hori. When classmate Yuki glimpses Miyamura's unique appearance, it stirs jealousy in Hori, who prefers this side of him to be private. Miyamura reciprocates this sentiment, valuing their intimacy. Turu, noticing their closeness, reveals his feelings for Hori, only to face rejection. Hori, however, is more focused on her connection with Miyamura, who believes they're incompatible for her own good. This frustrates Hori, prompting her to distance herself from him. While returning from the market, Hori gets caught up in singing an anime theme song, drawing attention in the bustling marketplace. Miyamura praises her voice, and she explains it's a song she used to sing with her brother. When he asks about her favorite songs, she realizes she's out of touch with current music but can recite anime lyrics by heart. Back at home, Hori's mother learns about Miyamura's visits and expresses interest in meeting him. Hori realizes she doesn't even know Miyamura's first name. She discreetly waits for others to address him, but to no avail. The next day, her mother eagerly awaits Miyamura's visit, treating it like a date. Despite her plan, Hori's mom manages to get Miyamura's first name. Annoyed, Hori observes boys changing to gather information, which puzzles Miyamura. When he discovers her motive, he bursts into laughter. To end the mystery, Miyamura writes his full name down. He suggests she call him by it, but when she tries, it feels awkward, leading to an unexpected punch. Hori's embarrassment deepens when Miyamura correctly addresses her by her first name. Despite a busy role in the student council, she willingly helps others, even covering for inexperienced members. Yuki thinks she's being taken advantage of, but Hori doesn't mind. Ishikawa lends support too. Miyamura teases that she's assisting because she has a crush on presidents. During a chaotic incident, Ayasaki leaves her notebook behind after colliding with Miyamura. In a meeting, the missing budget book causes a public scolding for Hori, who had delegated the task to Ayasaki. Miyamura steps in, confronting the situation with unexpected force. He reveals the missing book, proving Hori's innocence. Ishikawa questions his methods, suspecting the president holds a secret about Hori. Hori explains their long friendship and how she used to boss around Sengoku. With her birthday approaching, Ishikawa worries about the right gift, while Miyamura ponders the same. Both Sada and Hori feel a pang of sadness, realizing that Miyamura's visits might not be as frequent after graduation. Finally, Hori's birthday arrives and he presents her with a gift. Miyamura surprises Hori with a thoughtful gift, a CD of popular pop music, leaving her wondering how he always seems to know what she likes. From a young age, Miyamura felt isolated in school, labeled as weird and gross. It changed in high school when Hori reached out to him, making him feel accepted for the first time. In their third year, Hori and Yuki find themselves in class one, while Ishikawa hopes for Miyamura to join them. Speculation arises about the nature of their close bond, whether it's just friendship or something more. This marks Miyamura's first time in a project group, leaving him questioning his place. When Ishikawa asks him about himself, Miyamura reflects on his own feelings of detachment. Ishikawa compliments Miyamura's appearance, though it's uncertain if it's a sincere compliment or something more. Ishikawa appreciates Miyamura's uniqueness in a positive light. Miyamura wishes he could go back a decade and tell his younger self that he's just as normal as everyone else. In elementary school, Sato's early mornings lead Hori to do the same. Asaki's curiosity about Hori's connection with Miyamura leads to a heated exchange. Hori fiercely claims Miyamura as hers, feeling foolish afterward. With Sada absorbed in football, Hori and Miyamura spend ample time together, watching movies or enjoying comfortable silence. They discover unique features about each other, like Hori's fingers and Miyamura's soft hands, appreciating their differences. Asasaki tries to pass off her inquiry as a joke, but Hori reacts strongly, surprising her. Unbeknownst to them, Ishikawa overhears. The next day, both Miyamura and Ishikawa sport make up, hinting at a scuffle. Their classmates speculate about the marks. Ishikawa, stirred by Aesaki's words, questions Miyamura about a direct proposal from Hori, but Miyamura believes they're just friends. 
Frustrated, Ishikawa tests Miyamura's reflexes, leading to a surprising retaliation and despite Ishikawa's apologies, tensions linger between the two. Miyamura and Ishikawa feel responsible for the fight, while Hori and Yuki find it odd they resorted to physical confrontation. Ishikawa witnesses papers flying out of a window, dropped by Kauno, a student council member who apologizes for the mishap. Ishikawa praises her dedication, even when nobody's watching. Hori passes an unwanted ice cream flavor to Miyamura, who then gives it to Ishikawa, claiming he doesn't like it either. They playfully offer it to Sengoku, the council president. Initially skeptical, he eventually accepts. He invites them to the air-conditioned council room for relief from the heat, including Hori and Yuki, even though he initially directed his invitation only to Ishikawa and Miyamura. As they wait for Hori and Miyamura, Ayasaki asks Ishikawa if they're dating, leading to the revelation that Ishikawa also has a crush on Hori. Kauno jokingly suggests Hori and Miyamura might be occupied with something else, leading Ishikawa to misunderstand. Later, Miyamura accidentally causes a soda can to explode, prompting Kauno to offer a handkerchief to Ishikawa. Noticing Miyamura's unflappable demeanor, Hori tests him by asking to see his tattoos. Surprisingly, he complies without question as Hori had seen them before. Curious about her sudden interest, Miyamura stops her to understand her motives. Hori admits she often feels nervous or clumsy, while he always appears composed. Hori playfully tests Miyamura's embarrassment threshold, prompting him to share a recent flustering encounter with an old friend who assumed they were dating. Despite not even using first names yet, Miyamura promises to clarify the misunderstanding. Hori reassures him it's not an issue. Shindo sends Miyamura a photo with his girlfriend, suggesting a double date. Mortified, Miyamura swiftly deletes it and calls Shindo to jokingly tell him to die. Curious about Miyamura's past, Hori wants to know more about his middle school self. While Hori feels sick from an abrupt blast of air conditioning, Miyamura and Ishikawa are nearby. When a guy approaches Hori, Miyamura reacts swiftly, delivering a running slap. It turns out the guy, Shindo, just wanted to be introduced to Hori. Shindo, a bit dim but friendly, expresses interest in changing schools to join them. Despite running a fever, Hori insists on going to school. Sauda, her responsible brother, takes care of her, emphasizing not to die before he returns. This makes Hori reflect on how quickly her brother is growing up. Now she has Miyamura, who comes to check on her when he learns she's unwell. He promises to stay with her until she's better or until she asks him to leave. Concerned about Hori's temperature, Miyamura contacts her mother and informs Ishikawa about her illness. In a moment of love, he confesses his feelings while Hori sleeps. As he leaves, Hori wonders about the timing, deciding to pretend she was asleep, thinking it might have been a hallucination. After school, Suda informs Hori that he saw Miyamura holding hands with a girl from another school, sparking irritation and confusion in Hori. This prompts her to avoid Miyamura at school and on her way home. When Miyamura brings up his love confession from the day before, Hori musters the courage to ask about the girl Sada mentioned. Miyamura clarifies that it was Chika Shiju, Shindu's girlfriend. They were holding hands because Chika needed support while walking. However, Hori isn't entirely satisfied and flings a book at Miyamura's face. Her frustration stems from how Miyamura addressed Chika, not the fact that they were together. The tension dissipates when Miyamura admits he doesn't know Chika's last name. They then revisit Miyamura's confession of love, to Hori's surprise, she confesses that she overheard everything while waking up. Miyamura apologizes for his earlier hesitation, admitting he was afraid of Hori's response to his feelings. Before they can continue their conversation, Kichukori, Hori's father, enters the room. After a lengthy discussion, Hori officially introduces Miyamura as her boyfriend. Turu, already aware of their relationship, becomes subdued, though he hides it from everyone. However, Sakura Kauno notices his change in demeanor. Feeling insecure about not measuring up to Remy or Hori, Sakura realizes she has feelings for Toru Hori and Miyamura continue their routine of doing homework together at her house. Their dynamic remains largely unchanged since they started dating, including their occasional playful disagreements. In short, Miyamura finds himself getting closer to Kyosuke. More accurately, Kyosuke has developed an obsession with Miyamura. Kyosuke even goes so far as to invite Miyamura to take a bath together and suggests he spend the night at Hori's house. He even proposes sharing a room with Miyamura. During one of their conversations, Kyosuke inquires why Miyamura is fond of Hori, to which Miyamura promptly responds. He explains that he admires Hori's character for not judging someone solely based on appearances. The following day, news of Hori and Miyamura's relationship spreads throughout the school when a student spots them leaving the same house on their way to school. No one expects the beautiful and intelligent Hori to be dating the reserve Miyamura. The day after, Miyamura arrives at school with a different appearance, 
to the point where even his classmates don't recognize him. Instead of feeling pleased, this agitates Hori because female students swarm around Miyamura. Many are Ru snapping pictures of Miyamura carelessly. Soon after, Miyamura catches the attention and even finds himself followed by a girl named Honoka Sawada from the second grade. Initially, they think Sawada has a crush on Miyamura, but it turns out she admires Hori and is a fan of hers. She is displeased that someone like Miyamura is dating Hori. From then on, Sawada and Miyamura never get along as they often clash over Hori. Ironically, they live in the same apartment building right next door. To make a long story short, Miyamura invites Sawada to come over to his apartment while they both wait for their parents to return. Through their conversation, Miyamura learns that Sawada has an older brother who has passed away. One day, while taking out the trash with Yuki, Toru accidentally spills a drink on Sakura. Toru offers his tracksuit to Sakura as a replacement. Later, when alone with Yuki, Sakura asks about Yuki and Toru's relationship. Yuki replies that they're just friends. A few days pass and Sakura returns Toru's tracksuit, along with a cake as a gesture of gratitude. Toru is pleasantly surprised to find he enjoys the cake, leading to Sakura frequently sharing her homemade treats with him. Hori notices Yuki's recent jealousy when Sakura is around Toru. Given their long friendship, Hori empathizes with Yuki. Yuki isn't one to voice her desires or preferences, often giving away things she likes like in the bookstore. On the contrary, she tries her hand at baking to keep up with Sakura. Though her initial attempt isn't perfect, she receives positive feedback from Hori, Miyamura, and most importantly, Toru. Miyamura departs for Hokkaido for five days. Hori faces difficulty in getting updates from him due to her phone's battery dying. The last message she receives is when Miyamura has just arrived in Hokkaido, after which he goes silent. On the day of his return, Hori, unable to wait any longer, heads straight to his apartment. Unexpectedly, they bump into each other in front of the elevator. After confiding in her girlfriends, Hori musters the courage to try acting cute in front of Miyamura, though it doesn't quite work out. However, Miyamura assures her that he loves her just as she is. Sauda shares a drawing of him, his sister, and Miyamura, expressing concern about Miyamura taking his sister away. Miyamura reassures Sauda that he would never do that and promises to be both his big brother and Hori's big brother. Ayasaki fell for a boy who was gentle even in assertive situations. He wishes you were more athletic but finds happiness in the admiration of both boys and girls. This attention sometimes brings anxiety, but Ayasaki loves every aspect of him, even his discomfort. He faces his fears for her sake and stood out to her for not judging based on appearances. Their shared love for Mangmet deepened their connection, with Ayasaki borrowing books from his extensive collection. She returned them to Ayasaki, hoping to visit his house again for more books. It was a way to indirectly ask what he'd do if it were his last day, and his sincere answer surprised her. He confessed his feelings and becomes stardust. Ayasaki admitted she felt the same way, appreciating his honesty and determination, regardless of others' opinions. Hori adores every aspect of Miyamura. They playfully tease each other, with Miyamura placing his foot on her head during a nail painting session. This leaves Hori craving more playful moments, hoping for different kinds of interactions. The next day, Miyamura adopts a tough guy persona at school, causing confusion among their friends. When a suitor approaches Yuki, Miyamura and Ishikawa intervene. Ishikawa poses as Yuki's fake boyfriend while Hori cheers them on. Handsome classmate Yanaji mistakes Yuki as taken and moves on. Yuki later asks if he intended to propose and Yanaji reassures her, despite his poor eyesight. Hori gives Miyamura a funky haircut, finding his pigtails cute, though Miyamura himself isn't too thrilled. While making their way home, Hori and Miyamura unexpectedly encounter two of Miyamura's former middle school acquaintances. It's clear that these boys aren't extending a warm welcome. Instead, they proceed to hurl insults at Miyamura. Witnessing a crowd of female students flocking around him, Hori can't contain her frustration any longer. She promptly vents her anger in response to this unpleasant remarks against Miyamura. Hori suddenly beats them until they are severely injured. Still holding on to her obsession, Hori orders Miyamura to be mean to her, from sending Hori away to hitting her in front of Miyamura's middle school friends. Hori finds herself inexplicably relishing this unusual situation, feeling an unexpected sense of joy. In contrast, it's Miyamura who grapples with a lingering sense of guilt. After an unusual dream, Mekio Tanahara promptly reaches out to Miyamura. Unfortunately, Miyamura misses the call. Determined to make amends, Tanahara pays a visit to Miyamura's workplace, expressing his intention to return in two days' time. He places an order for two cheesecakes and two fruit tarts. Tanahara endeavors to build a rapport with Miyamura, seeking to mend their past. Meanwhile, in Hori's room, Miyamura comes across her middle school memory book. When questioned about his own memory book, 
Miyamura admits he's considering discarding it. Despite his initial hesitance, Miyamura begins to feel a sense of reconciliation towards Tanehara. He comes to believe that in this world, it's nearly impossible for someone to exist without any friends at all. This realization encourages him to believe that even he can improve his relationship with Tanehara. Hori warns Tanehara to stay away from Miyamura, expressing her fear. Tanehara reassures her that Shindo is even more intense. When Hori questions Miyamura's preference, Shindo suddenly appears, acting possessively. Tanehara steps in to remove Shindo. Hori's main concern isn't the girls, but the guys who might distract Miyamura. She makes him promise that if he falls for someone else, it should be a girl. Miyamura asks his guy friends to keep their distance from him. Yuki unexpectedly meets Yanaji at the market, this time wearing glasses. Yuki's sister is amazed by her attractive friend. Yanaji is thrilled to talk with Yuki outside of school, though he leaves considering Ishikawa's feelings. Kono hears rumors about Ishikawa and Yuki dating. But Yuki decides to be honest with Kono's friend Ayasaki about their fake dating plan, appreciating Kanem's feelings. Kono has been absent, and Hori and Ishikawa can't reach her. Yuki realizes she needs to express her needs openly to avoid a lifetime of regret. Her sister encourages her to do so. Just as Yuki is about to respond to Ishikawa's message, she reads that Kono has confessed her feelings to him. Ishikawa asks to speak with Yuki privately. Kono confesses her feelings to Ishikawa based on rumors, not expecting a response but wanting to express herself. Ishikawa, even without his promise to play along with Yuki, feels he's not the right person for Kono and believes she deserves someone better. Yuki reflects on Kano's efforts from baking cookies to finding the courage to confess, while all she does is run away. Kono, seeing Ishikawa and Yuki together, feels her heart sink. She tries to leave, but Sengoku senses something's wrong and presses for an explanation. Kono downplays it, saying her heart is just a little broken. Sengoku believes whoever rejected Kono doesn't deserve her and should be expelled. Kono breaks down in tears, leaving Sengoku shocked. Yanagi bonds closely with the student council. Consequently, their friendship strengthens. Miyamura, in turn, helps Sawada feel at ease around boys, including Toru and Sengoku. Sometimes, Ura's exuberance overwhelms Sawada. However, when Ura falls ill, Sawada worries he's upset with her. But he returns to his energetic self upon recovery, making her hesitant to be around him. At Ura's home, he displays a different, calm side. Despite occasional conflicts, he deeply cares for his little sister, Motoko, who works hard in school. When Motoko's teacher criticizes her scores, Ira seeks Hori's help in tutoring her, even gifting her a good luck charm. Yuki visits Toru for video games, discovering his discreet nature due to an inquisitive maid. Together, they enjoy gaming and cake, further solidifying their growing relationship. In the student council room, Remy invites Sengoku for Christmas Eve dinner, but he declines due to a dislike for bugs, a collection of which Remy possesses. Each member cherishes the holiday in their own way. Yanagi chats with Yuki's sister. Tanahara spends time with his brother, Toru and Yuki stroll together, Yura aids Motoko in diligent study, Sengoku summons courage to visit Remy, Shindo enjoys time with Chika, and Sakura relishes solitude. At Hori's, everyone eagerly anticipates the cakes Miyamura ordered. They're a bit sad he couldn't make it due to work. He briefly visits and returns to the shop. During the ride back, Hori expresses her desire for him to stay, regardless of what she doesn't know about him. Surprising her, Miyamura proposes marriage. Hori happily accepts, emphasizing her commitment to his happiness. Reflecting on his high school years, Miyamura cherishes the impact of Hori and their friends, believing it was destined. At graduation, Sengoku gives a speech. Miyamura's sneeze briefly steals the spotlight. On the rooftop, Miyamura contemplates his past until someone invites him into a photo. Sakura confesses her feelings to Toru on the last day. She appreciates being part of his remarkable high school journey. Kyosuke, waiting for Miyamura, warmly refers to him as his favorite child, capturing the moment in a picture. Some mistake Kyosu for Miyamura's father, irking Hori. Matoko sees a vibrant, happy side of Ira. Hand in hand, Hori and Miyamura share a special closeness that he's never experienced before. He's profoundly grateful for how Hori transformed his high school years for the better. As their high school concludes and marks the end of first season, a truly remarkable journey this has been.